Hi. Uh, my name is Sam Mack. I'm a program manager on Azure Active Directory B2C. And today we're here to talk about how you customize your sign-in experience and drive your conversion rates to make sure that you have the best possible user experience. So we're going to split the talk into three sections today. The first bit, we'll talk a little bit about what Azure Active Directory B2C can do for you. We'll, then we'll talk about how to uh, customize your B2C experience, and we'll actually go into the portal, and I'll customize a policy right in front of you. And in the third part, we're going to talk about how you take that customized experience and then make it even better. You can do a little bit of experimentation and do a little bit of A-B testing and just make sure that the incremental changes you're making are driving your conversion rates up. So. What is Azure Active Directory B2C? Well, Azure Active Directory B2C is a customer identity and access management solution. At its core, we help you easily build a connection with your users by providing you a registration and authentication experience. So by integrating your application with B2C, you can choose between a set of built-in policies that allow your users to sign up with an email and password and create an account or create an account using their social identity such as Google or Facebook or Microsoft accounts. The B2C service actually serves the pages to your users for you. We, you specify a set of HTML and CSS content and so that you can control every pixel on your page and use your brand and app layout to provide a seamless user experience. We provide integration for 10 identity providers built in and you have the capability to integrate with many more. You can integrate with uh, any cu uh, custom providers, such as Azure Active Directory, and any other workplace or government ID as well. Then you can take Azure Active Directory B2C and plug it into your uh, business ecosystem as your authentication service for your applications or to supply data to your uh, data to analytics, CRM, and other marketing automation. So, this is one of our customers, Real Madrid. Whoa. Real Madrid. You may have heard of them. So in their experience, you can go and sign up users using email and password. They've also chosen to use Facebook and Google. And this is their live site on their page for their millions of users. So I know what you're all thinking. How do I get my experience to be as nice as Real Madrid's? Well, I'm going to show you three features. Um, so there's page UI customization, which allows you to specify the page content that will pull for you and for you to put your branding in your layout. There is language customization, which allows you to localize your experience to any language to extend your user reach worldwide. There is password complexity, which lets you change the requirements to your password so that it could be really easy and reduce that user friction, or you can make it more complicated if you have greater security needs. So let's jump into that demo. Uh, I'm going to go and pull up the portal here. And so I've already done some basic configurations to my tenant. I have an app registration, which will talk to my web app. I have configured Microsoft and Google as identity providers. And uh, we have docs for setting up all these processes in case you need help. Uh, and of course, I've also created a sign-up, sign-in policy that uh, just has the identity provider selected. So it supports local account, Google, and uh, Microsoft. So it, I'm in my sign-up, sign-in policy right here. And I click on Edit. And so the first step is to go and configure the, pa configure the page layouts. So I go to Page UI Customization here and select the unified sign-up, sign-in page. That's the first page shown, the page that Real Madrid was using um, in the example. And I'm going to go copy some uh, uh, the link to a blob storage I've already set up with my HTML and CSS content. I'm going to go. Whoop, I'm going to go paste paste in here. And yes, and there it is. So I click OK, and I'm also going to need to edit my local account signup page, which is the second page shown when a user is registering. And it asks them for more information, such as their uh, email, password, whatever. So again, we say we want to use a custom page. We paste in the URL and click OK. And click OK and save the policy. 
And then once the policy is saved, we can click Run Now. And we have an excellent, a great rated user experience for Woodgrove Groceries. So let's go one step further. And we're going to make this available in uh, Spanish as well. So in under Edit Policy, I'm going to enable language customization. And what this does is that it makes your policy start reacting to the OIDC parameter UI locales. So when you specify in the query string, or you specify the query string parameter and specify it to say French, it'll localize the experience to French. So for here, I'm going to explicitly enable French so that if a browser came and didn't specify the UL locale parameter, it would localize, it would uh, react to that request as well. So once that is saved, once that is saved, there we go. We go back and we can select explicitly for this to show, for us to show this in French. Hit Run Now, and we now have a page in French, and you now support French users. So uh, this is available in 36 languages out of the box, and you can localize to any language if you provide the string content for all those other languages. Uh, so now let's go configure our password requirements. So by default, we enforce the AD standard, which is to have a length of 8 to 64 characters and to have three character classes. And character classes are some things such as uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols. So that might be a little bit difficult for our users if we're just the grocery store app. So let's go with something custom. Oh, by the way, we also offer a simple requirement that just enforces a length. So with uh, custom, we can specify this to be six characters, just a little bit shorter, and only enforce two character classes so that a password that's uppercase, lowercase would also work. We once again save our policy. And once that is done, I'm going to not specify ULA locale. I'm going to run now. And this is the experience. It's the exact same. But when you go and register, now when you enter a password, the help hint actually has changed based on these new requirements. So I've only typed in the letter F. So you can see that it doesn't match any of the requirements. If I also type capital F, that automatically satisfies the two character, play, character classes. And once I have enough characters, then it turns that off as well. So let's go back to our slides. So we've gone through three features. And so page UI customization allows you to have your own HTML and CSS content for your page hosted on a blob storage. We pull that down for you and run that page for you after we have filled it with these controls that you've selected. Um, so you can also use this feature to edit the attribute labels and IDP labels, and also change the controls in case you want to use drop downs or radio buttons. Uh, language customization provides support for 36 languages out of the box. And by providing all the strings and uploading them to your uh, B2C tenant, you can have uh, any language. You can use this to change any string on any page in any language uh, if you don't like some of our translations. Password complexity allows you to change the, your passwords to suit your customer needs. Uh, simple passwords will just enforces a basic length requirement and is really easy for most users to uh, get through. Uh, you can set, also set a custom requirement to be however complicated you want it to be. So I know what you're thinking now. You have a beautiful experience. How do you make it even better? How do you know that every single change you make here allows you, ma uh, makes your users even more successful? And the answer to that is experimentation. So we're going to run an A-B test. We're going to make an incremental change to our policy, such as just changing the background, which is, will be the case that I show here. And we're going to run both experiences at the same time so that it's not something to do with the timing where the uh, conversion rate is better. And we're going to see how, look at the data to see how this impacts your customer's success. When we're looking at the conversion rates, we're looking at the percentage of people that go through your experience and have a successful result. So in order to do this, we have two features that are in private preview, user traffic rules and user insight reports. User traffic rules allows you to take a policy, and it can redirect you to any number of other policies. 
and user insight reports will allow you to look at the trends and analytics of all your aggregated user data. So let's jump back in and see exactly how this works. So I'm not sure how familiar you all are with B2C, but this is a B2C custom policy. And specifically here, we're going to focus on this section, which defines reroute rules. You can define two types of reroute rules, wait and match. With match, you can define a, uh, a flight ID for every single uh, policy that you would redirect to and set a query string parameter so that you take the users directly to that experience. With wait, you set the uh, wait corresponding to every single policy here. So you can see here I've set my wait for flight B2C policy flight one and B2C policy flight two, each as one. So we're splitting our users 50-50 down the middle. Now, I've already uploaded this uh, policy to my tenant. And so I'm going to copy the uh, run now URL for this policy. And I'm going to copy and paste it into two different browsers. And if we're lucky, because this is randomized, a randomized A-B test, we're going to see two different experiences. So I'm going to run one here, uh, pull an in-private window, and run one here. And we got two different experiences. So now that we've, we're, we've successfully run this experiment, let's look at the analytics and see how this impacted our users. So if we go to the user insight reports here, we can see that in our A-B test report that was specifically generated and has uh, set our control to be flight one and our treatment to be flight two, based on, you can see that there was a 20% improvement in sign up and a minor improvement in sign in. But having that result in your signups is that many more users and is that much success for your application. Uh, additionally, with user insight reports, you can see all sorts of data, such as like how what the behavior is for your new users and how successful that is. All this data is sliced by your policies, your language, or by device, so that you can segment your users however you want, and also how many which application you're accessing this through. So we can look at your active users and your and specifically, I want to call out that you can also look at the non-conversion reasons for your tenant. So what this allows you to do is to take a look at which users or how many users are unsuccessful with certain operations. So we consider when a user forgets their password as something unsuccessful. And if we want to reduce that, then maybe we consider reducing the password requirement. Um, then, so let's go back to the slides. So user traffic rules is something in private preview which we're looking to release in the coming month. So you can redirect, you can take, um, you can have one policy that your application is taking your users to, and based on either the match parameter or based on a weighted A-B test, you can take them to any number of other uh, policies for a different user experience. The policy will leave a cookie on their browser so that it will always take them to that same experience so that your users won't think anything funny is going on. All this data is tracked for the user's sign up and signing success is tracked through uh, our analytics and then displayed whoops, through our user insight reports. With the user insight reports, you can go and see user trends. You can split your information uh, the view of your information by language, device, or identity provider, and figure out why your users aren't converting. So I hope you all enjoyed the presentation. If you want to learn more about Azure Active Directory B2C, we have a new, brand new course at this link, aka.ms slash learnadb2c. We also have a ton of documentation at uh, aka.ms slash adb2c. And we, you, please just visit us at our Azure Active Directory booth uh, if you have any questions. Thank you.